I should introduce myself, shouldn't I? Yeah, because that's the polite thing to do when you meet new people, introduce yourself. My name's Davis, Davis Bates. I am a storyteller, I am a singer. I'm gonna do both, but introductions are a two-way street. Um, so on the count of three, to save some time, everybody, adult included, just say your name, ready? One, two, three. Hi. Nice to meet you. Jasper. You <laughs> snuck in at the end there, that was sly, that was sly. Well, now that we know each other, I can give you some stories. And all the stories I'm gonna give you, I'm not gonna take them back. You get to keep them, give them to somebody else. And the first story is one of my mom's favorite stories, I'll tell you why at the end. And it starts, how do a lot of stories start? Once upon a time. It's in the union rule book. I gotta do at least one story like that. This is it. Once upon a time, there was a tailor. And tailors make clothes for a living like you and I are wearing, right? They make shirts, they make pants, dresses, and coats. This tailor wanted something for himself more than anything else in the world. He wanted an overcoat for winter when it got cold. But he was too poor to make something for himself. He always had to make something, sell it, get enough money to buy food, pay the rent, still have enough money to buy cloth to make something else to sell. But gradually he scrimped and saved. Anytime there was spare change jingling in his pocket, he would take the change out and put it in a jar. I would do that too, except we have a tradition in my family that my dad started, that the kids get to wrestle with the dad and any change that falls out of the dad's pockets the kids get to keep. So I don't get to keep my own change. Even though my son is now 26, we skip the wrestling part. That would be really dangerous for me. We just have a jar by the door. We put our spare change in it. We split it up later. But this tailor, he didn't have any kids. He finally saved enough money to buy the cloth to make a coat for himself. He made a big wool coat. It came way down below his knees. He liked it so much, he wore it even when it wasn't quite cold enough to wear it outside. Like a day like today, you might wear it, unbuttoned, flapping in the breeze. He wore it and wore it and wore it until the coat was all worn out. At least he thought it was, because he looked. There was a hole in this elbow, and he'd just gotten a puppy. And you know how puppies like to play, right? You know, they were playing. And the puppy jumped up into a hole in the back of the coat, but he looked and he saw there was enough good material left to make something else. So he took the coat, he cut off the bottom, patched up the top, and had a jacket which was better, he could wear it more often, and he did. He, he wore it and wore it and wore it until the jacket was worn out. At least he thought it was, he looked, another hole, same elbow. He, he was always leaning on that elbow when he was thinking, and he thought so hard, he wore a hole in the elbow. And the puppy had grown up to be, what? Dog. Yeah, that's what a lot of puppies do for a living. They grow up to be dogs. And it was a big dog, about this big. But even big dogs, they like to play. They were playing, the dog jumped up to a hole in the back of the jacket, but he looked and he saw there was enough good material left to make something else. So he took the jacket, he cut off the sleeves, patched up the middle, and had a vest. Just about like this one, except there wasn't enough material for pockets. He didn't care. He wore the vest almost every day. He wore it and wore it more until the vest was, what do you think? Yeah, worn out, right. At least he thought it was. He looked here and he was shot. He always wore his vest open like this. And when he bragged, he held onto the vest like this. And he bragged so hard, he wore holes here and here. But he didn't brag holding onto the back of the vest because then he kind of looked like a chicken. Mm -hmm. And people would laugh like that. That's not the point of bragging. I have people laugh at you, so the back was fine. There was enough good material left to make something else. So he took the vest and took it off, cut about 20 pieces out, and sewed them up into a nice cloth. Yeah, like a patchwork baseball cap. He put it on his head, he looked at himself in the mirror and he said, whoa, you're looking good. And he was. It's actually a very good thing to say to yourself every day, whether you're wearing a hat or not. A lot of us adults, we get out of the habit because we see all these ads that tell us we should look like other people. So in case this has happened to you, pretend you're wearing a hat. This is the only audience participation part of the story. Pretend you got a hat on and, and you don't have to pretend because you got one, okay? And hold up a mirror, there's safety numbers, so I'm going to do it. It could be a two-handed mirror, one-handed mirror. Hold up the mirror, on the count of three, just tell yourself, whoa, you're looking good. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Whoa, you're looking good. Yeah, and you all look great to me. You do that every day, you feel great about yourself. And he did that every day because he wore the hat every day. He wore it indoors, he wore it outdoors. He even wore the hat to bed with him. The only time he took it off was to wash his hair. He wore it and wore it and wore it until the hat was... Worn out. 
at least he thought it was. He looked, the brim was kind of shot, over here was a little worn, but here was okay. There, there was enough good material left to make something he'd been needing a long time. He had a hole in the knee of one of his pairs of pants. So he made something you don't see as often as you did when I was a kid. He made a patch. He took the hat off, he got about 10 pieces out, sewed them up into a patchwork patch, put it carefully over the hole, and sewed it up. He liked that patch. That was the best patch he'd ever made in his life. He liked it so much when that pair of pants was dirty and it was time to wear his other pair of pants, he took the patch off the first pair and put it on the second pair, even though that pair didn't have a hole. He didn't care. He had each week moving the patch, one pair of pants the other, wearing it, wearing it, wearing it, until the patch was worn out. At least he thought it was. Because he looked, there was a hole in the middle, but all four corners of that patch were almost as good as new. So he took the patch off, cut the four corners, and sewed them up into a nice cloth button. And he put the button right on his shirt, even though he was wearing a t-shirt. He sewed it on kind of like a belly button right about here. And he liked the button so much, he did the same thing he'd done with the patch. He moved it from shirt to shirt. Sometimes we're on the sleeve, sometimes on the collar, sometimes it was the front, the back. He wore the button and wore it till the button was... Yes. At least he thought it was. Because when he looked at the button, he could see there was just enough left of it to make a story out of it. <laughs> so he made a story out of it. And now I've told it to you. And the nice thing about stories, most of them, they don't get worn out as quickly as clothing. That story is over 300 years old, and I've told it hundreds of times. So if you want to tell it to somebody, you don't have to worry about wearing it out. That's the story. <laughs> now, I actually found that story in a book. As you guys know, coming to libraries, you can find a lot of great stories in books. But it's actually an old Yiddish folk song that came over to this country around 1900 or so from Austria or Germany. But someone whose singing voice was the kind of voice, whenever they started singing, people would go like this. Oh, don't do that. They decided they just better stop singing and tell it. And so it got collected and put in this book where I found it. Now this song is still a song and it leads into a farming story. So I can do at least one farming story. But a guy named Bill Staines wrote this song. He lives up in New Hampshire, I think still. And kids liked it so much they started moving their hands to it. They decided it was too short. They didn't get to move their hands enough. So they made it longer than he originally wrote it. I'm going to teach you the long version, in case you don't know it, and even if you do, because it's kind of my job. Put your hands out like this, and then you go, all God's critters got a place in the choir. You ever heard that? No? Okay, then I'm going to teach you. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Good. And then you go, some sing low. You point to the ground. Some sing low. And then, of course, some sing higher. Right? Some sing higher. And then you cup your hands around your mouth and go, some sing out loud, some sing out loud. On the telephone, you make a telephone. It's an old fashioned telephone. Telephone, wire. Yep. And then you go, some just clap their hands. Yep. Or paws. Yep. Or fins. Or claws. Or tentacles. I told you it's a long version. Or jaws or anything they got now. Or anything they got now. Bow wow. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing. That's a lot to learn at once. So we're going to review it from some just clap their hands. Um, because later on, when we get to the end, we're going to have a test. It's, it's one of the latest trends. I try to keep up with these things. It's a fun test because we're going to see how good you can be, how fast you can go. But we got to start slow at first, especially for the adults, because we learn things slower as we get older. Um, some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws, or anything they got now. Bow wow. Good, good. Now we'll do the chorus all the way through. Ready? Here we go. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws, or anything they got now. Bow wow. Good going. Here's the first verse. 
Listen to the bass, it's the one on the bottom where the bullfrog croaks. The hippopotamus moans and groans, a big to-do. The old cow just goes. You're right, that was a kind of mini quiz in the middle. You passed. Ready? Course, here we go. All guys, scribbler's got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws, or anything they got now. Bow wow. The dogs and the cats, they take up the middle where the hummingbird hums, the cricket fiddles, the donkey brays, the pony neighs, the old coyote howls. And you know what? This is one of the few times where it's okay to howl like a coyote in a library. Usually it'll get you kicked out, but not today. On a count of three, as loud as you want. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh! Good, now the chorus, here we go. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws, or anything they got now. Bow wow. Listen to the top where the little bird sings the melody, the high notes ringing, and the hoot owl hollers over everything. The jaybird disagrees, singing in the nighttime, singing in the day. The little duck quacks, he's on his way. The possum ain't got much to say. The porcupine talks to himself. Hmm, poor thing. Ready, course. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws or anything they got now, bow wow. It's a simple song, a living song everywhere by the ox, the fox, the grizzly bear, the grumpy alligator and the hawk above, the sly raccoon and the turtle dove. Ready, here we go last time, normal speed, never do it fast, but now the speed, are you ready? I take the chuckle as a yes for everybody, here we go. All God's critters got a place in the choir, some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws, or anything they got now. Bow wow. Good. You're doing very well. Even the adults are keeping up. I think you're ready to go faster. Now, we won't go really fast right away. Because I've learned, as I've gotten older, that it's better to go faster slower. We don't want any strained muscles. We're going to build up to it. We've been going at this speed, or tempo as it's called in music. We've been going, uh, let's see about this. One, two, three, four. Uh, that fast. We're going to speed it up to this fast. It's going to go one, two, three, four. Oh, uh, that, that fast. Oh, that was just an example. This is for real. I promise I'll go on this time. <laughs> Count of four. We'll see how you do. Kids usually have no trouble at this speed. Adults, good luck. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws, or anything they got now. Bow wow. Whoa. Some good adults in this room. They kept up. Okay, I think you're ready to go faster. In fact, we're going to go so fast, we may go faster than the speed of light. Don't worry. You can do it any way you want to. You don't have to do it exactly right. This is one of those tests where you can fake it. It's actually a good skill to learn. You'd be surprised how many adults get by with it, faking it. So this is a good lesson, all right? I'll give you a quick count of four. First, before something is serious and important in your life like this, it's good to relax. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. Okay, shake your hands. Get them nice and loose, but not too loose. You know, I'm flying off. Hands up. Okay, look up here. I'll give you a quick count of four. Don't blink. You might miss it. Ready? Here we go. One, four. Want to do it again? <laughs> what? Oh, you didn't see it. I did it too fast. You know what? I'm teasing. Do it all the time. Drives my kids crazy. This is for real, though. We're going to do it this fast. It's going to go like this. One, four. That fast. 
Now a hint, when we get going this fast, it's actually better to get quieter. Because some of us have discovered if you try to be too loud, too fast, the words trip over your teeth and they fall on the floor or back down your throat. And that's not the point of the whole thing. In fact, you can do it so quietly, I won't even hear you. I'll know you're doing it because your mouth's moving and your hands are moving, okay? This is really fun. After this, we'll do something else I like doing with this. It's actually a lot easier. I'll give you a quick count of four. If you missed the beginning, jump in and fake it. It's okay. Ready? Or you can just watch me be silly. That's okay, too. Ready? Here we go. I got it. Wonderful. I'm in a place that requires some single, some zero, and I don't some shit. I don't want to to think about some shit. I don't want Now, you may have noticed that's faster than I can do it. I was faking a lot in the middle, especially the hand motions. There is really something fun we can do with this, though. If you, at, one time I was in a library, and at this third grader, we did it really fast. He raised his hand. He said, let's do that song really, really slowly, which was a cool idea. Adults can learn things from kids all the time. Have you ever been watching a movie or a TV show, and all of a sudden everything goes in slow motion? And if people are talking, not only do they move in slow motion, but their voice goes really low. So the fun thing of slow motion, we're going to use our lowest, slowest voice. Ready? I'll give you kind of four. Ready? One, two, three, four. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands, or paws, or fins, or claws, or tentacles, or jaws, or anything they got now. Bow wow. Good going. Give yourselves a hand. That was good. That's it. You did great. Hey, now you know what? That song is not only fun, it happens to be true. Every single critter has a place here. There, as a kid, there was one smell I could not stand as a kid. The smell of skunks. My friend, he didn't mind it so much, but I just really did not like the smell of skunks. We can go down a highway and you ever smell a skunk going down the highway? I didn't like it. But I learned something about farming when I lived out in Western Massachusetts for the first time. We had this big barn, and we were going to have a party. And it was going to be outdoors, but the barn was going to be where the party went in case it rained. And right inside the front door of the barn was a bunch of burlap wrapped around some sticks. And in that burlap, some yellow jackets had built a nest. You know yellow jackets, right? Those wasps. And they can sting sometimes. Well, we didn't, we had kids coming. We didn't want the yellow jackets nest to be there, but we didn't want to spray it with poison because the poison would have gotten in the wood and kids might put their hands on it. So a lot of, like a lot of adults who didn't know what to do, we didn't do anything. Well, we figured out what to do. And then one morning I got up and I smelled a skunk. And the smell was stronger over by the barn. And I went in and looked inside, and the yellow jackets were buzzing around that nest, and half of the nest was gone. It had been ripped apart. And I wondered, did the skunk do that? So the next morning I went out, I smelled skunk again. I went in, and the nest was totally gone. The skunk had ripped it apart to get at the eggs inside. And I found out later, skunks, their noses are so tough they don't feel the stings. So the skunk got rid of the yellow jackets nest for us. And later on, I was reading a book about farming. And farmers, when they farmed with horses, they'd have hay fields. And you ever seen a yellow jackets nest in the ground? There's a hole right in the ground. And the yellow jackets are flying in and out of it. They would have that in their hay fields, too. And when you're haying with a horse, if the horse stepped on that yellow jackets nest, the horse would get stung, and it would take off. So when they found a nest like that, the farmers would put some molasses feed right next to the nest in the hopes that a skunk would find the nest and dig it up. Isn't that cool? So skunk, that smell I didn't like very much, they, they have a place. Every animal, no matter how big, how small, has a place. And some of them help out farmers when you don't think about it. Like bees. 
they pollinate all this stuff. I grow, I grow flowers to get to have bees come to my place. Now, um, there was a critter in that song too, Coyote. You ever seen uh, Wiley Coyote chasing a roadrunner in cartoons? Maybe not. No. Well, that's how I first saw coyotes. But on the farm where I used to work, I didn't see these coyotes do this, but we were growing watermelons and these really nice watermelons. And we were checking to see where they were ripe and we could sell them. And just that night, we decided these are ripe. We're going to take them to market the next morning. We went out that morning and we saw all these muddy footprints of coyotes. And they figured out that the melons were ripe too. And what they came was they like punched them with their noses and ate the melons. And when they got full, they started rolling the melons down towards the woods to eat later. We actually found melons 100 yards away from where we were growing them, them pushing around. Isn't that amazing? And there's stories about coyotes that you can find in books. Native Americans in the Southwest have been telling stories about Coyote, the trickster, for thousands of years. And this story about Coyote, it happened so long ago that when it happened, there were no stars up in the sky. If you went out at night and looked up, there would be no stars, just the moon. And the moon would travel across the night sky. In the morning, the sun would come up, chase the moon out of the sky. And one night, the creator was walking along, looking at the moon. It was pretty, but it looked lonely, all by itself, up in the sky. And the creator thought, wait, I've got all these little bits of light left over from making the moon in the closet, in a box in the closet. Uh, kind of like sawdust, only light. Uh, I'll bag up these little bits of light, and I'll call the stars. I'll hand out the bags to all these animals, and I'll tell them they have one night to put their shape in the sky. It'll be beautiful. All these animal shapes spread over the sky, but I'll only give them one night to do it, because if I give them more, they'll do this. They'll go, should I put it here? No, maybe over there. No, maybe back there. They need a little pressure. In the morning, any star left in their bag when the sun comes up will be gone. And the creator thought it was a great idea. Called all the animals around, told them the plan, handed out the bags of stars, said, mouse, you can put your shape in the sky. Rabbit, you can put your shape in the sky. Deer, bear, coyote, even you can put your shape in the sky. But you only have tonight to do it. In the morning, any star left in your bag when the sun comes up will be gone. So when the moon comes up, get busy and have fun. And the creator went away. And the animals there are excited. Coyote was the most excited of all. Coyote looked up in the sky and went, Oh, oh yeah, a coyote up in the sky, me, <laughs> me, up in the sky, I like it, I like big, a big coyote, yeah, from there, over to there, from there, over. I fill up the whole sky with me, coyote, everybody will look up in the sky and they'll go, whoa, what a big coyote, we'll look at anybody else, just me, what a great, great idea. Coyote had a problem with thinking. Every time he did it, it made him tired. You know the type, right? He decided I was going to have a nap. He laid down. It was going to be a short nap, but he kept sleeping. The sun began to set. Coyote was still sleeping. The moon came up, and Coyote was still sleeping. The animals, they started putting their stars up in the sky, and Coyote was still sleeping. Mouse finished first. Coyote slept. Rabbit finished. Coyote slept. Deer, bear, all the animals had finished putting their stars up in the sky, and Coyote was still sleeping. And that's when the moon began to set and the sky grew light in the east and rooster crowed and Coyote woke up. Saw the moon set. The sky grew light and thought, oh, oh no, I gotta, I gotta get my stars up in the sky. They're gonna disappear. He picked up his bag, he ripped it open and he threw it up in the sky and the stars spilled in a long, wide line right across the sky. That's how the Milky Way got up there. Coyote throwing his bag of stars. And Coyote looked at that long, wide line of stars, and you know, it really didn't look anything at all like a coyote. So he just went, oh, oh no, no. And ever since then, coyotes look up in the night sky, and they see the Milky Way. It still looks nothing like a coyote. So they go, oh no, oh no. So next time you hear one, you'll know what they're saying. 
at least according to that story of how Coyote got his help. Thank you. Now, I didn't bring a coyote with me, but I brought a very distant relative. Oh, that's a coyote. You see him? Yeah. Uh, some people ask me if he's a real dog, and I say yes. He is a real dog. He's a real wooden dog. The vet bills are a lot cheaper, and he hardly eats anything at all. Um, and he doesn't just sleep. He also dances. Uh, but you can't see him dance while he's sleeping because this doesn't work. So we need to wake him up. Now, some people like to be woken up by really loud noises, alarm clocks, people yelling in the room. Hey, get up. He does not like that at all. Um, so I'm going to spell his name for you. Uh, his name is B I N G. What do you think the last letter is? Uh -oh. You're right. Bingo. So on the count of three, we're going to whisper, Bingo, please wake up. See, if I do it by myself, it doesn't work at all. It's going to take all of us to do it. Right? No, it's pretty whispering is like, right? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Bingo, please wake up. It worked. He's awake. Cool. So now, all we need is a song for a dog named Bingo to dance to. You got any ideas? What? That one, that one, he loves that one because it's about him. That's the one that goes, um, let me see, there was a librarian had a book. No, that's not how it goes. There was a parent had a kid. It's a parent I'm having a problem. There was a something, though. There was a farmer that farmer had a dog. Oh, good, it's another farming thing. So I'm checking that box. That's cool. Um, and you guys know it, so you can see it with me. I won't get lost. Oh, and have you ever done it that way where the first time through you spell his whole name, right? But then, instead of singing the B, you clap. So it's clap, I-N-G-O, and then two, then three, then four, then five. He loves it that way. If we do it that way, he'll do some fancy dancing, I promise. Um, bingo, you got to get on the board to dance. Takes him a while to get situated. Does he look ready? Either that or he's doing yoga. He does a really mean downward dog. All right, so you sing with me and you'll hear him dance on the board. Ready? There was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. B-I-N-G-O, 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 and bingo was his name. Good, take a break. Now this time through, we'll clap on the B. I'll sing the word clap because my hands are kind of occupied. There was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, I-N-G-O, I-N-G-O, and bingo was his name. Oh, two claps this time, give it a try. There was a farmer had a dog bingo was his name. Oh, N-G-O, clap, clap, N-G-O, and bingo was his name. Oh, three claps this time, here we go. There was a farmer had a dog, bingo was his name. Oh, clap, 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 G-O, clap, 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 G-O, clap, 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 G-O, and bingo was his name. Oh, wait, how many claps this time? Oh, thank you. There was a farmer had a dog, and bingo was his name. Oh, Watch the fancy dancing. Here we go. There was a farmer at a dog. Bingo was his name. Oh. oh. Bingo was his name. Oh. Wow. And he likes to take a bow afterwards, and then usually he falls back asleep. You know what? He did two shows today. He could probably use a nap. You know, you could not get me to take a nap when I was a kid. My mom would send me up for a nap on Saturday morning with my dad, with a book we got out of the library. And my dad would read to me for 20 minutes, and then my dad would fall asleep. 
and I would come downstairs. But at least you got 20 minutes. And then you know what I discovered in high school? Naps were really good. I would come home from high school, I'd have a lot of homework, and so I would be tired, and I'd take a 20 minute nap, and then I'd do my homework, and I have not stopped taking naps. Oh, uh, we should sing him a lullaby. Um, there's a great lullaby that you guys probably know, and it's his favorite. I don't know if you've heard that the summer reading program theme is a universe of songs and stories, so there's gonna be a lot of star stuff. You can guess what this song is. Yeah, let's, let's sing it and make sure he gets to sleep. Then I can tell you another story, ready? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. That was great singing. Now we need to see if he's asleep. That's a little hard with wooden dogs, because you may have noticed that wooden dogs sleep with their eyes wide open. So what we can do, on a count of three, even though we're in a library, we can yell Bingo's name really loud. And if he doesn't blink, then we'll know he's sleeping like a log, which he should be because he used to be one. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's Bingo's name? Bingo. That's it. Thank you. All right. On the count of three, I'll watch this eye. You watch that eye. Ready? One, two, three. Bingo! No blink. He's asleep. Cool. I can tell you another story. Um, this is also not quite a farming story, but I, you guys are really fun. And it's a, it's a story that you could probably remember to tell to somebody else because you're going to do something in it. Although at the farm where I used to, um, I, I used to work, the first farm I ever worked at Hampshire College, we had a lot of frogs. I love frogs because they eat a lot of bugs. I also love bats because they eat a lot of bugs. I used to live in a cabin in the woods, and I had a bat that lived in the corner of my cabin, and at night it would fly around the inside of the cabin eating mosquitoes, and then it would go out. So I never had any mosquitoes in my cabin because of that bat. But this is about frogs. And this used to be my son's favorite bedtime story from the time he was about three months old. He didn't understand a single word I said, but he liked what my face did, and he really liked the song. I'm going to teach you the song first. Put your hands together like this. The song goes, I'm a wide mouth frog. Yeah, you sing with a kind of a wide mouth. Let's try that. I'm a wide mouth frog. And he's singing again a little higher. I'm a wide mouth frog. And then you go like this. This was his favorite part of the song. You go, oh, how great it is. Yeah, kind of a Tarzan frog. Oh, how great it is to be up. Why mouth frog? That's the whole thing. So let's sing it all the through, all the way through. Ready? I'm a wide mouth frog. I'm a wide mouth frog. Oh how great it is to be a wide mouth frog. You got it. Guess what this story is about? Yeah. I don't know how you do, but that he made up that song about himself, and he was really curious about what other animals fed their babies. So he went on a trip to find out. He started hopping. You, you can take one hand, pretend it's the ground. The other hand's a frog, because this is how he hopped. Now, if one hand gets tired of being the frog, it's only fair to switch, give it a chance to be the ground, too. And while this frog was hopping, looking for an animal to ask what they fed their babies, to keep a rhythm to his hopping, he sang his favorite song, which you know, right? It was this. I'm a wide mouth frog. I'm a wide mouth frog. Oh, how great it is to be a wide mouth frog. And he hopped till he came to a dog. It was a big dog. He looked up and said, Hi there, dog. What do you feed your babies? Which is really fun to say. You pretend your lips are made out of rubber and they bounce really wide on the word babies. You know, let's try the whole thing. Hi there, dog. What do you feed your babies? Really make your lips bounce. Ready? Hi there, dog. What do you feed your babies? 
And the dog said, I feed my baby some milk. Yeah. And, and dog food. And ooh, sometimes, sometimes we tip over the garbage. Oh, yum. And the frog said, oh, how very nice. Bye bye. Look at my stuff. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. Now that's fun to say too, because you bounce your lips again. Let's try that. Oh, how very nice. Bye bye. Really make your lips bounce. Oh, how very nice. Bye bye. And off he hops, singing his favorite song. I'm a wide mouth frog. I'm a wide mouth frog. Oh, how great it is to be a wide mouth frog. And he hopped over to a farm. Hey, we got another farm. And he said, Hi there, cow. Hi there, chicken. Hi there, pig. Because that's who we met. What do you feed your babies? Let's try that again. What do you feed your babies? And the cow said, Well, I feed my babies milk and then grass and hay and corn and stuff. And the chicken said, muck, 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 I feed my babies muck, 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 bugs, muck, bugs and corn. And the pig said, I feed my babies, I feed them, 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 I feed them. Milk, yeah, milk and corn and pumpkins and apples and loaves of bread and acorns, lettuce leaves, stale cake, anything they'll eat actually. The frog said, oh, how very nice. Bye bye. And off he hopped singing his favorite song. And this time he sang it very quietly because the pig had piglets that were sleeping. Didn't want to wake him up. Thought it would get too confusing. Sing it almost whispering like this. Ready? I'm a wide mouth frog. I'm a wide mouth frog. Oh, how great it is to be a wide mouth frog. And off he hopped away from the farm down to a river where he came to a frog a turtle and a fish. And he said, hi there frog, hi there turtle, hi there fish, what do you feed your babies? And the frog said, well, 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 I feed my babies bugs, bugs, bugs. And the turtle said, oh, oh well, I, I feed my babies Oh, false alarm. I feed my babies. Oh, fooled again. Oh, well. I feed my babies on bugs and fish and dead things from the bottom of the river, which is fine if you're a turtle. And the fish just went like this and went. Because fish don't talk. That's a whole other story, why fish don't talk. What it would have said if it could have talked is I feed my babies bugs, worms, smaller fish I find in the river. The frog said one last time. Ready? Oh, okay. how very nice. Bye bye. And off he hopped, singing his favorite song one last time. I'm a wide mouth frog. I'm a wide mouth frog. Oh, how great it is to be a wide mouth frog. And he hopped further down the river until he came to one last animal. Now, when you tell the story, you can make it last longer. You can use more animals. You have a lot more time than I do. But sooner or later, you've got to come to the end. Sometimes the last animal is an alligator or a crocodile. But the way I heard the story, the last animal was, this is the American Sign Language word for it. Wait till my hand moves. I'll make a sound it makes. I bet you can guess it. It goes like this. Yeah, came to the snake and said, Hi there, snake. What do you feed your babies? And the snake said, I, I feed my babies wide mouthed frogs. <laughs> and the wide mouthed frogs just went like this and went, Oh. Well, I don't see any wide-mouthed frogs.
dogs around here? <laughs> Do you? And off he went, as quick as he could. And that's the story of the wide mouth rock. <laughs> So, do you guys have time for like one more song and then a quick, quick story? Or maybe the other way around. I'm never, never really sure. This actually, you know what? This is, a, this is really a farming story. From the town of Leiden where I used to live, I, I used to pick strawberries for a guy in town named Ken Spatcher. And these are the kind of strawberries that don't come from California. So they don't ship very well. And if it's a really hot day, we'd have, we'd have to put, pick them and move them as quickly into the shade as possible so they didn't get heated up by the sun because they wouldn't last very long and they wanted to be good for market. We picked 200 quarts of strawberries that day. And there was a, a guy named uh, Craig Constantine who was picking strawberries with us. And he had a son, Brett, who was three years old. And he wasn't that great at picking because he tended to want to eat them when he picked but he was really good at carrying the quarts of strawberries into the shade. So he spent about four hours while we were picking, just picking up quarts of strawberries and then walking over and putting them in the shade and coming back. And he was like walking about 50 to 100 feet each time. And we got done and we were gonna get paid for picking strawberries and we're having coffee and we're sitting around and Brett's in there with us and Kenny is paying us money for it. And he looked at Brett and he said, Brett, you did a lot of work today. I want to pay you for helping us out. And Brett said, no, that's okay. And Kenny said, no, I really want to pay you. Here, at least take this. And he held out a dollar bill to, to Brett. And Brett looked at the dollar bill. Then he looked at Kenny. And he looked at the dollar bill. And then he looked at Kenny. And he said, no, that's okay. I got one of those at home. I don't need another one. He hadn't quite figured out the money yet, you know? And later on, I think he found out that you do need more than one of those at home. But at that point, he really didn't because he was three years old and his parents paid for everything. And sometimes we don't need as many of those little things as, as we think we do. And there's this great song by Rafi that you may know it, you may not, but I'm gonna teach it to you line by line. It's gonna be the closing song. And the chorus goes like this. All I really need is a song in my heart. Try that part, ready? All I really need is a song in my heart. Next, next part goes, food in my belly and love in my family. Try that part. Food in my belly and love in my family. Next part is like the beginning. All I really need is a song in my heart. Try that part. All I really need is a song in my heart. Love in my family. Try that. Love in my family. So that's the whole chorus. And if you know the verses, you can sing them with me. But the chorus goes like this. Do it all together. All I really need is a song in my heart. Love food in my belly and love in my family. All I really need is a song in my heart, love in my family, and I need the rain to fall, and I need the sun to shine, to give life to these seeds I sow, to grow the food I need to grow. All I really need is a song in my heart, Food in my belly and love in my family. All I really need is a song in my heart. Love in my family. And I need clean water for drinking. And I need clean air for breathing. To help me to grow up strong, take the place where I belong. Last time. All I really need is a song in my heart, food in my belly, and love in my family. All I really need is a song in my heart, love in my family. Thanks for singing, you guys. Thanks for coming.
And I hope you have all you really need. And I want to thank you and the library for having me. And a special thanks to the Stowe Cultural Council for funding my visit and everything else they do in town. So have a good spring. Yeah.